looks like it's time to jump into our first match of the day. It is yeah. going to be uh, University of Connecticut piloting the Warrior and George Mason University on the Druid. And the score is 0-0, zero to zero, so just ignore that one there. We'll get that fixed as soon as we can. Yeah, um, you know, it's not really a big surprise to see that Wave is the lead strategist for this team. Again, a guy with just a wealth of experience where Hearthstone is concerned. Uh, you know, ideally the team would want to be taking advantage of that. And to see them looting up, leading off a Druid first, you know, not a big surprise. This deck is a pretty neutral pick. It doesn't really have any weak spots, doesn't really yep. have any super uh, super good matchups for it. It's just a very strong deck altogether. UConn, meanwhile, though, they have not brought Grim Patron Warrior. They have actually brought uh, a traditional Control Warrior build, yep. which in the Collegiate event, this seems to be the Warrior of Choice almost. Yeah, and I think a lot of it has to do with the team element. Uh, when you're collaborating a lot on a specific turn, Sometimes having three people is not as beneficial when you have a patron warrior because if you spend too long thinking, you don't have enough time for the animations. Yeah, that's a deck that requires a ton of expertise. And when you get into certain situations, they want to be spots that you have just practiced before. You already know what to do. And so that's a good thing to mention. You know, when you're going through as many uh, animations as Grim Patron Warrior does, you don't have time to deliberate. You just need one guy who's in the driver's seat and going for it. So if you don't have a Grim Patron Expert, maybe it's not the best warrior deck to be playing. Yeah, so we've seen a couple schools now going with that Control Warrior, and University of Connecticut is no different. George Mason looks like they're collaborating a bit here. Yeah, I'm discussing over the best turn for this one. This is actually kind of an interesting spot they've gotten themselves into because they don't have the information to really discern which one of these it is quite yet. Yeah. But something they definitely can always be concerned with is the amount of armor a warrior has. Like, armor shred is just Where an important thing. So if they choose to charge this, it wouldn't have terribly surprised me. But what isn't a surprise at all is that they're actually bringing out this Shade of Next Ramos out of stealth now. So it can be targeted uh, at this point. But the Druid of the Claw is protecting it. So Death Spite, uh, Fiery War Axe, you know, Fiery War Axe wouldn't kill a 4-4 anyway. But uh, now it's protected from the Death Spite swing, which is really the important one. So once it's gotten past that hump, it's kind of open to just rain tear on this board unless UConn just has the right removal spells. Which we take a look at the hand, they do have the right removal spells, yeah. but <laughs> you know, uh, either way, one of these minions is going to be sticking to the board still, and they're going to have to continue from there. So happy to not get both these guys shredded. And let me tell you what, Darnassus Aspirant doesn't look that scary on turn five, but it just so happens to be a catalyst to Dr. Boom on turn seven. Yeah. If UConn doesn't kill this, they're going to be in trouble. Yeah, and I think UConn is going to realize this because turn seven is a power play for Druids regardless. Dr. Boom, Ancient of Lore, Ancient of War. Turn seven is that turn that Druids are usually looking to unlock um, a lot of potential with their hand. Draw more cards to get a big board presence, to get a big ton up on the board. So um, not surprised that right away, as soon as their turn starts, they're already... Looking like they're throwing that bash towards the uh, the Rast Aspirin. Yeah, and now the, the the small problem with this, though, is that the Druid of the Claw has gone uncontested for a couple of turns here. If if uh, George Mason University picks up another big minion to play back yeah. behind this, UConn's going to have a lot of trouble taking care of them all. They do have Sylvanas, they do have Executes in their hand, but they don't actually have ways to activate these Executes. So they're padding their life total, which is great for them, but they have to hope that uh, George Mason University starts to run out of gas. And there's one of those key minions that gets picked up with Azure Drake. And now two seven drops in hand. I mean, you're very likely to see Sylvanas try to contest this board. But even then, they have to be worried about a silence from Keeper of the Grove. Yeah, very true. And uh, double Azure Drake is uh, starting to uh, become more popular in Druid. With cards added like Darnassus, Aspirin, and Living Roots. With early drops no from the Druid, uh, being able to refill your hand and have more cycle in the deck. Um, becomes more relevant uh, with, with these Druid decks. So you'll see a lot of times you'll replace something like a Sludge Belcher or a second Sludge Belcher, or maybe even a Lothab to pop in that second Azure Drake, just because it makes your curves a lot better and it yeah. makes you so you don't have an empty hand as much. Just keep the gas going. Keep the gas going. Well, the GM, uh, George Mason University, they're gonna keep the gas going right here. Uh, Ancient Allure to pick up two cards is not too shabby. And honestly, this Sylvanas is really scary at this point. But they have so much to back behind this oh, yeah. that I'm not sure they're actually worried about it. Yeah, and Force of Nature can actually be a really good tool to deal with a Sylvanas because you can pretty much uh, double your chances of Sylvanas stealing something that's pretty much a dud uh, if Sylvanas is low health on the board and you have use of Force of Nature to try and remove it because you can force your opponent to try and steal uh, one of these. Oh, this is great. Yeah, this is a great play. So Sylvanas is going to trade these. It doesn't quite kill it, but is going to deal two damage, all this stuff. It's going to pick off that 4-1, and it's going to take one of these minions. 
And so Azure Drake, not quite the one they wanted, but I think it's good enough. Ooh. Well, just as I say that big game hunter gets drawn. Right off the tippity top. Yeah, <laughs> this is, you know, this game looked like it was really good for Yukon, but now suddenly things are looking like they're going to have to invest a lot of their uh, resources into killing minions in a way that they wouldn't necessarily have wanted to invest them. I mean, George Mason University, hmm. not only that, but they also have a wealth of damage in their hands. So they yeah. may... There are some alternative plays here, like double swipe isn't the worst thing in the world. Or even uh, just um, like one force of nature and a hero power or something along those yeah, lines. Yeah, I mean, there's plenty of ways to do this. They're going to go for the Azure Drake, and so they're going to let this um, the, the opposing Azure Drake just kind of ring free and figure out where it's going to attack. And in the meantime, they're just taking it upstairs. Yeah, and I, I think that's the way to go. This matchup is all about pressure. <laughs> oh, look at that. Look at that little guy. He's there for support, too. The He's the one who's actually leading this team. Yeah. Yeah. That's the real Weva. <laughs> You didn't know it, but he's a dog. <laughs> he's a dog. People that have been beat by Wave on the ladder think, oh, no. Those people have been like, you guys are, the dog can't play Hearthstone. <laughs> yeah. They can't. Yeah, Execute actually going to make pretty good work of this, though. But again, the big problem is that George Mason University, that ancient lore, gave them the gas to continue to push through this. And even now, keep this Keeper of the Grove, fantastic pickup for them as well. This taunt was going to stop this big game hunter right in its tracks. Now suddenly it's crashing through for four damage. Lotheb is shutting off any utility spells they can play. And there is 11 power on the board for George Mason. Yeah, with and double swipe in hand, plus just a force of nature. All of a sudden, Savage Roar becomes nearly guaranteed lethal for the next turn. Um, That's the thing you're always worried about when you're playing against a Druid deck too, is that deadly combo with force of nature and Savage Roar. Yeah. As soon as they hit nine mana, you start to worry about it. And when they have extra minions in play, that just means the Savage War is dealing even more damage. Oh, and yeah. that's the last spot you want to be in. But that's the problem for these warrior decks. They do a great job at answering things one for one and then having these big endgame threats their opponents have to worry about. But because there's so much burst potential from the Druid, they have to continue to check the board until they get a very, very clean turn with a big minion. Yeah, and let's let's take a look at Yukon's options here. They can gain help with Shield Man and put them back up to 19, uh, plus an armor up. Uh, would bring them back up to 21. If they do that and just clear off the BGH, they would be out of range of lethal, at least from the hand of George Mason. But again, a Savage Roar would end the game on the spot. Yeah, and so I think that they're going to kind of conclude that they really don't have a way to fight actively against Force Nature Savage Roar and just do the best they can to live in the meantime. Yeah. Uh, and this is just a turn you find yourself in oftentimes when you're playing Hearthstone. You're going to have to take a risk at some point. This is the risk they're taking. It's not a huge one, uh, but certainly the worry is always there. And so they're going to get a little bit of relief this turn that they're not dead, but still some bad news because there is a lot of action once again in George Mason's hand. Yeah, and the University of Connecticut can go for the uh, double dip for the hero power with the Just Car Two Heart next turn to gain uh, six health, which might be able to give them a little bit more time because then from all the turns on that point, they'd be able to armor up for four with the tank up, but... Like, this is why Druid has classically been considered a strong deck against Warrior, because they can just, you know, they get in some face damage early, especially if you have to remove stuff with weapons. Hmm. Yeah, then, that's, that's another problem yeah. I wanted to talk about, too, was rolling in these turns. Yukon's running out of removal, and their removal's quickly going to become the weapons that they draw, but that's also going to cause them to take damage from those weapon swings. And so this is going to be the big push from George Mason University. All the pressure on Yukon. Minion damage pouring in. Still cards back behind the hand. Weapons are not good draws right now, but again, they're just basically out of removal. Uh, Bash is a decent pickup because it's sort of removal plus health gain, but I just, I don't know if it's going to be enough. They can Bash, Execute. Yeah. That seems like a, that's that's an ugly play to have to make on a low thab. I mean, Execute, you want this to be killing the biggest minions possible. Yeah. And here, they're going to have to use it for two effective damage. I mean, it'll kill any damage minion. Mm -hmm. But they're going to have to use to kill a minion with two health left. Ugh, a little bit rough. But at this point, you can't really do much more. And they're going to play just a card, True Heart, but not be able to take advantage of that tank up right when it's played. And if I'm counting correctly, that looks like it's 10 damage from hand with two damage on the board for you, George Mason University. You know what? You have counted correctly, TJ. Thank you. You could have played the spot of being the guy who makes sure that you don't miss lethal perfectly in this game. They should replace that dog on their team with me. <laughs> they might actually get a better result. They might. And George Mason is going to take, oh, look at that, Tespa Gunners. Yeah, buddy. That's the way to do it, man. If you're going to rep, you're going to rep. Indeed.